Welcome to another Onyx Con exclusive. Today's special guest is Dan Lish. Dan is an incredible illustrator with art spanning over decades. His love for hip hop culture brought him from his homeland of England to America, where in New York he learned so much about hip hop culture, expanding his incredible lifelong ambitions to be a part. It is totally reflected in his art that he accomplished that goal. If you are not familiar with his incredible line work and the tapestry of cross-hatching, enter this journey as we explore the mind of a master artist and his craft. Anis Khan is proud to present Dan Lish. So yeah. this is Dan Lish, the legendary illustrator, uh, <laughs> broadcasting live from England, am I correct? That's, that's right, yeah, on the south coast of England. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, I hear you just fine. Uh, you hear me good too, right? Yeah. Okay, great, great. So, south coast of England, you said? Yeah, uh, Brighton. Um, it's like a, a little London by the sea. Okay, okay. Um, but not as toxic. <laughs> <laughs> I love London, man, but I'm not a big, I'm not a big city person. I imagine. No, I, pr I prefer just to... Uh, have plenty of space to contemplate. Right. Yeah. So, so more of a country man at heart. That's right. Yeah, I was born and bred in in Suffolk, which is is very rural, okay. um, flat, not many hills. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. So growing up, were you always? I mean, people always ask us this question. I say us because I'm a visual artist too. But like, were you like born with the crayon in your hand from day one? Yeah. Always, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And. I, I was nurtured uh, by m my uh, mother and father, um, and they just kept, you know, it was, it, it was a blessing, really. You know, they could just see that I, I um, had a natural urge to to just make marks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you know what I mean? So it, it just progressed from pencil on paper to, uh, have you heard of rotaring pens? They're like mapping pens but you got to hold them really so they tightened me up okay and my dad gave me that gave me these uh these pens and it they're so thin the nib is so thin and they would get blocked up and you, it was a real pain in the ass but yeah. um they got me into inking from about a uh, probably eight nine years old mm -hmm. you know so but it, it really tightened me up because you had to keep the pen directly upright to let the ink flow through this nib that was like yeah. as thin as a hair yeah. um so i i just had to knock those on the head and just get um uh, mapping pens like dip pens or all, all these different styles of pens but that's that's how i got into the inking okay and that was way before comics uh i got into comics okay uh, yeah so it was, it was thanks to my father uh, my mother's artistic Anyways, I think it's what on her on her side. My mother, um, she's like a distant relative of um, Sir Joshua Reynolds, who was like the first president in the Royal Academy of Art. Oh. He used to paint royalty and all this and that, and um, uh, his statues up in London and everything. But which I haven't seen yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, right. Uncle. <laughs> He's like my seventh great uncle sat in the 1700s or something like that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, go on, you go. I was just gonna say, did you have like formal, I meant to ask you this the first time we chatted, but did you have like formal uh, training in terms of going to school for art? Did you go to art school in London or anything? Yeah, I did. I mean, it was, I wasn't very academic. I didn't do that well in school, you know, being, uh, I guess, dyslexic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with setting structure and remembering names and, you know, uh, supposedly there's going to be nine different types of intelligence. So, you know, in, in mainstream schooling, it's like one size fits all. And that's not the way it really is. Is it, you know, right. you've got classroom. I'm, I know diverging a bit in the conversation, but um, no, yeah. So, sorry, I've lost the thread. Of the, <laughs> what was the question? Well, you were just, well, just speaking on, you know, your formal training and how it developed. Yeah, yeah. So um, I did go to art college. Um, I went to two places in Great Yarmouth and Portsmouth. Uh, one's on the east and one's on the south. Uh, and they were okay. Um, 
you know, I didn't, I didn't get too much out of it on the social side of things. It was cool. And, and they just let you experiment, but I wanted to be taught the craft, right. you know, how to sort of apply oil paint and how to, and they didn't really do that. The way I'd like to be taught is, yeah, you learn from these accomplished people, masters or whatever, mm. different mediums, and then you go and do whatever you want. You experiment. Right. Not the other way around. That's the way I'd like to do it. So yeah. I didn't get too much out of it, to be honest. So I went on my own path. Okay. And they hated comic books and all this stuff anyway, because, oh, that's probably already done and they wanted me to experiment. But again, I, I wanted to hone my skills in the painting, the, the mediums, you know, the, the tactile nature of, of applying paint instead of it being all um, abstract thought. Sure. And where's, where's that going to go? I wasn't really into that. No, I got you. So I did it. Yeah, answer your question. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I went there. It's funny because I think, uh, you know, I think a lot of us who, as artists, do surreal type work and work that, you know, we did get into comic books. We did come up in hip hop culture and everything. It's all part of us. It's like we tend to have a similar path because I was, my mind was kind of the same. Right? Me going to Pratt and then I ended up at Atlanta College of Art, which is now. Mm. But you know, at Pratt, it was it was this formal, well-known school and everything for, I'm sure you heard of it when you was in New York, but uh, yeah. the thing about Pratt was like, you know, it's like, it gets respect because it's kind of like a Ivy League of art schools. But mm. the irony of it, when you talk about you didn't get much from it, I got a little bit, like I had my, I literally had about two teachers I always come up in my head when I think of Pratt and the rest of it was just like, man, just overpriced and, and over, <laughs> you know, all ego and no mm. substance. You know, because I didn't, yeah. I had to really just, you know, pull from, like you say, your own what you want out of it to get what you're really there for. Yeah, I mean, all due respect to to the to the the teachers, but I mm -hmm. I don't really remember anyone that stood out and said, mm -hmm. right, you need to do this and try this out. Yeah, they were just too busy smoking cigarettes and drinking tea. Man, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm just like, what the hell? I mean, uh, you know. Let me, so. let me ask this real quick, not to get us both on a tangent, but. In my experience, uh, you'd also run into a lot of teachers who they may have been decent artists or even incredible artists at one time, but because they didn't really want to be teachers, they tend to be so depressed and they put that angst on the students. No, they're like some of the most depressed people you ever met and they don't, they don't encourage you as an artist. They all, yeah. almost try to bring you down, hoping you don't get where they wanted to go because they feel like well, I, 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 did, I didn't really have that. I didn't right. notice any heavy depression. There's <laughs> it's just very... Right. We get with it. Yeah. <laughs> Or maybe they covered it up well. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. But, um, you know, I did my thing. I, I used the, um, the the facilities there the best I could. Right. I mean, to be honest, around that time, I mean, before that, when I, I got into hip-hop, when it came to our shores in the early 80s, you know, by the time I went to art school, I was so en engrossed and obsessed with it, you know, so I, I would go out, get my paint, you know, bombing and, and writing and I was still, I was, um, the dancing had slowed down a bit then, um, mm -hmm. from about 83 to 87, like the B-boy thing sort of fell off a bit, didn't it? Different styles came into it, but I was still doing all this stuff through art school. So oh. if I connect with, and it was very hard to find anyone that was into the same shit that I was in. Yeah. It was very, very underground and Maybe because I wasn't hanging out in the big cities, I was more in in smaller cities and towns. It was really difficult to connect with people, right. but that made you even more obsessed with it because yeah. it was like a, I put in my book. It was like a, uh, a like a slippery tropical fish. You know, you get your hands on it and it wiggle, mm -hmm. and then it'd be gone. It'd be gone again. Right, and, and you'd be searching for months and trying to get a sniff. Yeah. Of uh, you know, it was just, but that made it more, much more of a, a beautiful thing once you got your hands on it and you connected with someone. Mm. Or uh, yeah, it's it's difficult to explain, but um, so what? All, all through the art school thing, right. all, my hip hop thing was bubbling underneath as well. Gotcha. So what yeah. was what was your first exposure and first love of hip hop culture? It's plural. I always say plural because I. I hate the phrase the culture because I don't think there's no such yeah. thing. There's multiple cultures and we right. embrace whichever ones feel the most common or you know relevant yeah. to us. 
No, I, I hear what you're saying because I mean, it came to, I, I could make that sort of analogy that it came to our shores in a package, but it wasn't the same as that anyway. It came in little piecemeal bits but I, I was aware of it on um, on the TV. You get a little glimpse of it. There was a show called Top of the Pops, and it was a pop music show. You get, you know, I was, it was quite intriguing when you're like 10, 11, 12, and you see all these te teenagers doing these these funny sort of dancing. To, I mean, this is very 80s right then, you know what I mean? This is because um, I was born in, in 71. Mm. So... Um, you know, around 83, you just get little snippets and it's really intriguing. And then you, you hear some music on the radio or whatever. And then, you know, you get a connection with someone up in the cities and, and they're starting tagging and all this and that. And plus my father's an um, American citizen, born and bred in New York. So okay. he used to take me to the air bases and I used to get little snippets there as well. So yes. Milden Hall and Lake and Heath okay. mm -hmm. are, are American air bases in, around Suffolk and Norfolk. So we used to just, that's where I'm from, Suffolk. So that's where he used to take me there bowling um, when I was a little kid or, or the um, the American, um, the air the air, the air air shows, like flying all the airplanes. You go there, see all the airplanes flying around. Mm. And I'd see little, I'd see little snippets there, you know what I mean? So it was all little sub bubbling in the subconscious and then it all came together around 83, 84, um, because it was getting a little bit more mainstream, you had Beat Street and, and the film mm. Wild Style, and yeah, right. you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah. Um, and then it's just just hit me, you know, over the head, man. Just it just got obsessed with it. It was brilliant. Yeah. It was just so good because you know, fam family, bit of family struggles, parents separating, and you just want to connect with your your peers more and get away from the stress of family life. So you you want to connect with the music every element of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know we touched on that before but the only element that i didn't do of it was pick up a mic and i was just really bad <laughs> i did try it in about 85 but it was awful it was all so bad mm -hmm. so it was just uh yeah the dancing the artwork the graffiti you know and the djing djing came later obviously because if you're broke yeah you haven't got any access to anything until you get some money yeah and you can buy uh, the wax, and that was on import, so it's probably twice as much. Wow! Yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. yeah. Oh, so so hip hop came through college, especially even though you were into it before then, and as you say, you were reaching for it. You got a chance, um, you said, to go to New York, correct? Finally made mm -hmm. it. Okay. Yeah, that that was that was the the late nineties though. That was this was after. I mean, I did pirate radio for nine years. I, I did the first hip hop, one hundred percent hip hop. Looking at all, getting all the elements together under one roof. It was called the Go Off. That was in Portsmouth in ninety seven, mm. which is it, it sounds late, but yeah. nothing really happened before that. Yeah. You know, as one consolidated under one roof. So I started that and, you know, I was just trying to do things, you know, I was just doing graffiti and battling and, you know, doing the, like say the radio station. And then I just had to go to, to New York. You know, I got laid off my job, had a couple of grand behind me, just as a backup, mm -hmm. went to New York, mm -hmm. stayed with my cousins in Queens, okay. and, uh, Long Island. And then uh, eventually got to Staten Island. It was cheap rent. You know, I was a couple of, uh, I wasn't very really too far away from where Wu-Tang was based because yeah. I was talking to Ray Kwan about it and he's like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know, he couldn't believe I was, uh, I was in Shaolin. <laughs> you know, I got married <laughs> at St. George's Church, mm -hmm. right where you pick up the ferry. Right. And we had that million dollar view of um, the Twin Towers. But then when they, you know, obviously they got dustified, we moved to Brooklyn. Right. So, uh yeah, man. So I'm jumping all over the place. Yeah. So yeah. I got there in, in 99 and stayed there for about seven, eight years and then moved back. You know, there was my boy passed a uh, break. DJ Lacey he died really tragically. Oh, my right. sister's wife died really tragically and we had to get back to see family. Right. So that's why we came back. Right, right. Condolences, man. So with um, your time in New York, did you like, I know with your art, for anybody who knows your work, and anybody who will go look at it after this interview, if they haven't seen it, 
most of your work, from my perspective, seems to be engrossed in hip hop culture. It's, it's evident that that's your heart, even though you cover music in general and mm. truly cover black music, just, you know, black culture through the music, you're on it. And I love the fact that, you know, as an artist, you've actually had experience, you've actually engrossed yourself in it, not just somebody from the outside looking in, oh, I can get a paycheck because this is hot. Like you actually lived it, you're part of it, you are a part of it. Um, if, if anything, I would get really put off mm -hmm. if, if, if things were getting too successful because I, I wasn't from that. It was, it was real rebel music for me. Okay. You know, I would, get, I would get shit off of other people around, you know, other, basically other white people and all that. It was straight up. It was raw. It was raw. And I was like, no, this is, this is the shit I love. I'm going to defend it. Mm -hmm. And one day you'll be dancing to it. <laughs> because they said, you know, back in the day, they were like a lot of folks were saying, I don't know what they're saying. I can't mm -hmm. dance to it. There's no melody. And I say, you just wait. Well, actually, I didn't say that. I didn't give a monkeys about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I didn't give a, a you know, what. Mm -hmm. and, and so it, it, it's very sacred. Mm -hmm. I was always from that, that part where you pay your dues instead of taking, you're giving. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm a, I get very obsessive about it, probably very tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. I was very sort of like quite ruthless in a way, like very dubious of people jumping on a bandwagon. So when it started getting really popular, mm -hmm. especially 92, 93, in this country anyway, mm -hmm. it, wasn't re it was, still wasn't very mainstream, but it started creeping. I was like, I was very dubious. You know, these studio gangsters and all this. And I was like, Ugh. You know, so I really at mid nineties, I went back into b boy again. Mm -hmm. I went, I went. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother with that. I went straight back into the b boy again. You know, listen, old Africa Islam tapes, mm -hmm. just just practicing my head spins. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, so this, you know, is that, I guess it was that whole true school movement. Mm -hmm. You know, from like ninety two onwards for a little while. You know what I mean? Ninety one, ninety two, or whatever is that sort of whole true school thing. Like bringing back to the essence of it, and not thinking about the paper, yeah, too much. You know, just um, honing your skills and just having fun with it. Right. Yeah. So you em embrace more or less. I mean, you know, ethnically speaking, I know you're. You know, I think we we talking. You said that to your knowledge, you're straight up English roots, and like yeah. people treat you any funny when you would get in circles with you know blacks and Latinos in New York, and you know you got it from England, and you love this culture, and then, you know that you catch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I stood out like a sore thumb. You know, I, I didn't care though. You know what I mean? It's just um, I got down with quite a few crews out there. Um, I used to hang out with one of my boys was Buddy Esquire. I don't know if you heard of him, but he was he's like legendary. Uh, he used to do flyers for Funky Four Plus One. Okay. And he, he was on par with Phase Two. He used to do oh, the right, original right. flyers. Yeah. So it, we used to just me and him. We, we used to just go to Rosedale Park, Cretona Park, all these places in the Bronx. Um, and we were like the odd couple wandering around, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> we're both quite tall. I'm white, he's black, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, we didn't care, you know. Um, I'd be battling. I didn't do very well as you spoke to that in the past. I just... Um, I think I get performance anxiety or something like that. I'll be like, oh, God, i got a battle again. Um, I, I wanted to prove myself and just throw myself right into it, man. Just, um, I'd be rocking. We got down with Dynasty Rockers and, and BIS, Breaking Style. It was from um, Williamsburg when it was all pretty rough. It was like the hardest borough. Well, yeah. that's up for a debate or whatever back in the day. Crazy was crazy. Across the bridge from Manhattan to Williamsburg, you better be careful. You know what I mean? So I, I was with these this, this crew. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of um, history in Williamsburg before it got gentrified and uh, right. so Bushwick um, with the Dynasty Rockers. Um, and that's one I, I mentioned last time. You know, I was hanging with, with cats from who were dancing in the late 60s. They had that connection from the rock and that Latino thing with the rocking that, that sort of morphed into b-boying. Mm -hmm. I went straight to the essence. I really wanted to you know, just meet the architects and hang out with them and listen to the stories and learn. Yeah. You know, I don't really care anything. When, by the time I got to New York, everyone and their grandmother was rhyming. And I just wanted to get back to the essence. 
yeah. and, and not really listen to Turn Off Hot 97 because they're just playing the four tunes rotation <laughs> for a week. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah I, I was just very strict, you know what I mean? I was digging for breakbeats and, and DJing as well and, and just, yeah, just loving it, man. I didn't really care about mm-hmm. you know, whatever's popular. <laughs> you know? and, and I think with, with this Ego Strip project, um, which I'm known for, yes, we started in 2014, I could easily pull out in my mind, like, um, you know, who, who was a major influence and just, just like, you know what I mean? Just like, just watch it bubble all come to the surface and, and just freestyle it. And because it's all there bubbling under the surface, it's quite easy mm-hmm. for me to, to, to delve into that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, um, on the, on the music tip anyway, and then join the dots as well. Right. You know, like if I'm doing Pete Rock or it's not not really a good example, but if I'm doing someone uh, like DJ or producer, I have I'll bring little elements in for what they sampled or the tune I'm I'm thinking about their classic that resonated with me for all these years. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll do a little nod to the 45 that they sampled or whatever. Real nerdy, real nerdy shit. Mm-hmm. Really is, <laughs> yeah. So that that all I'll bring all that to the plate yeah. when I'm uh, when I'm doing these illustrations. So I'm just bouncing all over the place no it shows too i mean you're yeah. digging in the crates visually and that's beautiful that's right um, that's right yeah you know yeah so yeah. like with um all the people you've had a chance to work with directly on commissions but also you did a lot of i mean i look at all your work and i thought oh i think all these are commissions you know he's gotten work from illustrations for magazines or covers or mixtapes or actual albums mm-hmm. but uh you know you were explaining it most of it was just from the heart, just stuff you wanted to do. Like, yeah, I yeah. want to do this for this person as an homage. And then sometimes yeah. it is commissioned. So, like, how does it work when it is commissioned? And how does it work when it's not? Like, how does that work for you? Well, they'll, they'll just get in contact with me through the social platforms. They'll just hit me up on a, a direct message or, or um, it's usually like that. Uh, and then I'll say, this, just take it to email. Yeah. And, and then we'll end up just having a call and a chat. No. Um, with, with, one, wait, mm-hmm. sorry. I was going to say, what's been one of your favorite commissions so far? Working? Well, I was just about to say with the uh, Raekwon, mm-hmm. uh, the chef. You know, I mean, I mean that was 2017 now, so it's a little way back. But um, I mean, that comes to mind where it was just a surprise. Yeah. You know, he he just he just he just got to just just said, oh, that was, yeah, that was give me a call. That was for the album. Tell them the name of the album too. Oh, uh, so yeah, that was the wild. The wild. Um, so he said, uh, "Yeah." So I'm, I'm calling him up. He said, "Just get in contact with me." Here's my number. Call him up. That's great. And I, I was just very, very, <laughs> very conscious of my accent because <laughs> I sounded like a little, a little English like public school boy. Hello, this is this Raekwon, the chef. You know, it just sound because he sounds exactly like he does on wax, and and um, so it just makes me even more conscious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I eventually get get over that after about a year or two of talking to him, you know, doing various stuff. But right. um, yeah, that that was that was a good one. And yeah, I worked with uh, Cool Keith was an early one, uh, but I didn't really talk to him directly. It was just the label. You usually get to talk to the labels. You know, yeah. Sometimes the labels, the management, sometimes the artist. Wow. I, I say most of the time it is the artist, but a lot of the time it's uh, management and labels. Mm. Mm. You know, so you don't have that direct contact with him, which um, which is cool because sometimes I wouldn't want to be disappointed. Yeah, they're going to be a, act like a dick or something. You know, it hasn't happened yet. Sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. That feeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice to um, have that distance sometimes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and so you also are, you know, home hometown guy. I would say because I know he's from England, but uh, Omar, you've done work for Omar. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did his um, "Loving Beats" album, and um, he's working on. Uh, I think he's working on part two. That he said he'd like me to get involved with that, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Um, so we, we, you know, he, he's just a really funny guy, and, and we get along really well. And you know, we're friends and everything, so that's nice. Because uh, yeah, I mentioned before that. Um, where his children, he's got twin daughters. They went to the same school as as my girls. Right. Uh, his his 
wife at the time, you know, was, she was a ballet dancer, um, dance teacher. She would teach my girls and I would do a trade. I'd teach his girls do art classes so they'd come around my house and we'd hang out and everything. So, yeah, it was nice. And, um, yeah, what else has there been? There? There's been quite a few. Um, but I, I really can't think, man. Okay. 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 Move to the next one. Yeah. I'll ask you too, um, in terms of your ability to capture likeness, because a lot of people, I mean, I do you know portrait work myself. That's part of my history as an artist, so I get it. But for a lot of artists who struggle with it, like, what's what's been your technique for? I mean, like, how do you approach doing a likeness? Like, is it easy, well, to just immediate, or do you have to do multiple takes until you're like, yeah, that's it, I got them. Yeah, well, well, um, th these ones, all these ones here, right? Mm. They're the first ones that I did on the train, and they're they're all sort of freestyle. But what I did have, I mean, I've got a love. Not a love. I got a a manageable like and a hate relationship with phones because mm -hmm. they're so addictive. Mm -hmm. So I'm, what I'm getting at is that I use my phone um, just to research. Let's see if I can get you know the uh, the person that I, I need and use multiple shots of that. And if if the phone you know isn't available, I'll print out. Late, this is about a year later. I started um, just getting a reference, but not use one shot. I'd use multiple shots that I would just get off the internet, you know, just internet search. Say if it was Jay Diller or something, I'd, um, you know, I'd get three or four shots. And I don't like copying directly. I can't do that. One, mm -hmm. that they're sort of in, I've put them in a situation where they haven't been captured the same in, in the photo, you know. Mm -hmm. so it's like in contemplation or creating something or in the middle of, of doing some beats it's usually a very contemplative mood um, and the angle is different which is very difficult it's quite difficult so sometimes it's not right and especially on, when you're on a train you're wobbling about oh, yeah. you know sometimes the eye might be slipping down a bit and I'd have to redo it again um, but it's usually it's not bad you, I tell you folks with like Q-tip, Nas, with very symmetrical, subtle features, very difficult. Mm. Q-tip, it's just, just very difficult. Just mm. on, I had to just try and – I redrew it about four or five times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Primo, <laughs> Primo, very easy. Flash, very easy. <laughs> so, so – when you got like key features, you know what I mean. Just uh, <laughs> have you met either of them? You know them too, uh, Flash or no, no, no. no. You, you you at them in in hopes that that they say, yeah, I love your shit, man. She could do my album cover or something, but right. yeah, no. It's um, I always have that in mind. Um, same with Doom as well. I'm, I do a lot of Doom, and I'm always at in Doom. Mm -hmm. I don't think he even messes with all the social media bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but that's mm -hmm. that would be good. Sorry, man. Come on, I'm rambling. <laughs> oh, good. I was actually again. I'm just thinking, you know, artist to artist, how I can relate to that. Like, there's some people when I would do portraits, I could get them instantly. I wouldn't even have to draw them but one time. And other people, like you say, you had to just keep doing multiple takes until you like, oh, that's what makes it. You know. Mm. Yeah, you know. And it, do you? Do you? Um, turn it upside down or, or look at it in a mirror and stuff like I've that? I've done some of that and one of my other favorite things to do when I'm warming up is to do blind contour where you don't lift the pencil you just do one line and look at mm. the person yeah because it gets your hand to eye like so sharp yeah, so yeah. by the time you actually do the up and down looking you just you own yeah. it you already know the face you know yeah I was doing that with uh, I remember I did that with uh, craft work um, you know I did it was um I, for people that don't know, I mean, they're just, uh, you know, that's where Bambata got influence, you know, with Planet Rock. And they're very, very influential German electronic right. uh, musicians or whatever. So anyway, I did craft work and, and other, like Gil Scott Heron as well. Mm -hmm. they, they were the one-line jobbies. They're very sort of quick. Mm -hmm. I, I usually use a naught point naught five, very thin ink. And then go over it again in in like a, a 0.1, okay. uh, sort of craft into it. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I hear what you're saying. And, and I think um, for me, if, I, if I've got reference, I'll turn it all upside down and you can instantly see the mistakes. Mm -hmm. How are we doing for time anyway? Are we all right for time? We're getting close. We're getting close. So, oh, uh, yeah, I know for the real short interview. It's going quick. It's all good, though. We, we hit a lot of good points. I wanted to make sure you mentioned everything about Ego Strip, what that is. I mean, you've been talking about it, but never got a chance to just say, like, tell them what it is, Dan, so they know it. Yeah, I, yeah, it's just a, a, pro a project that happened very organically on the train from, from Brighton to London. You know, I had a couple of hours to create an illustration. I'll work on it when I get home as an ode to, to uh, the people that really, that really influenced me musically. Uh, and I, I put all those in chronological order. The first two years, I've just released a book, which is it's not available yet. I, I did a Kickstarter campaign. That was a great success. Mm -hmm. So the print is in Belgium. They've just informed me that they're shipping a 1,000 copies to my house. I don't know where I'm going to put them. The, the bed's going to sort of like raise four feet or something like that, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, it's going to be in a hardback book um really beautifully bound it's the first two years of the project and i'm going to do three volumes so i'm working on another kickstarter campaign next year and these will be available on um you know my online uh shop where you can get prints and stuff so that's, that's danlishartworks.bigcartel.com okay. and um yeah man so the book will be available hard copy um digital formats as well ebook and pdfs and all that stuff so that'll be that'll be up in, a, in about a week or two oh, oh. and the name of it uh was that a playoff or ego trip from de la Soul? It, it, yeah what it was it wasn't off de la it was off the magazine yeah gotcha. i used to love the magazine um but it was it was stripping away the ego of the b-boy bravado and all the testosterone and and treating the individual as just like like a conduit for something, for, you know what I mean? A conduit for something more. Like when you're in that that beautiful zone of creativity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with all of us, every, every creative human, man, everyone, you know, if you just let that flow. Yeah. And I was celebrating that and the, the creative journey. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what Ego Strip was about. So stripping away that ego. And then I thought, Ego strip, you know what I mean. So then it all, then oh yeah, that's a nod to the magazine as well. Uh, so it, and and that happened on the train as well. So it was all very subtle and yeah, I was just playing around with it and it all worked out, man. It just seemed to connect. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. That's so dope. yeah, that will be available very very soon. Man. Well, a couple of I ain't gonna do as many as I know we had a previous talk and I had a bunch of, but I'm gonna do a few quick questions. Yes. As um, what have been, who would you say are your favorite MCs, DJs, or, uh, well, I'll just leave it at that because that's most of the music, the MCs and the DJs, who's your favorites of all time, like, or even groups? I know, uh, I know that's tough. I know that's it's a very difficult, and, and, and it changes. I really haven't got any favorites, and it changes all the time anyway, but, mm -hmm. oh, man, I mean, you know, Gangsta, right. they sort of come up. Right. Uh, you know, Pete, Pete Rock, uh, you know, his production. Um, oh, jeez, there's, there's so many, man. There's just so many. Um, it's very, very, unless I just have a massive tumbleweed moment where I'm just thinking, mm -hmm. I'm not going to really get, you're not going to get much out of me on that. I can't, I can't really think too much. I, I haven't got an all time. I haven't really got all time. Where, where, where? It it changes all the all the time, man. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. just like there's some folk that are locked in out of nostalgia of just what they've always meant and what they still mean. Because I see where things going, and nobody is even equal, barely what they were. For instance, as a group, public, yeah, yeah, you know I'm saying just yeah, completely in agreement, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, mean, because it's just my gut reaction. These 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 crews pop up, but sure, sure. I think yeah, the importance. Of what they were doing, their you know production techniques or, or you know the lyrical skills. I mean, obviously rock him and right. whatever, but I mean, yeah, it's just there's just so there's so many. I know it is. I, I, my style nowadays is very eclectic. You know, I just listen to all, all sorts. You know, you know what I mean? Because as as I'm getting older, mm -hmm. um, I'm not as rebellious as I was, or I didn't have that angst and that anger in me that 
expressed it was expressed through the music so much. I'm a lot more chilled nowadays, right? You know, right. Um, and that and that will be expressed through the the audio that you listen to, the frequencies that you want to to take in. That's it. You know how you feel and and what you're letting in and what you're like. Nah, I don't want to hear that right now. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So sorry, I didn't really answer your question. <laughs> in a in a very damn niche way, you did. The more I get into yeah. it, <laughs> so, yeah. So, just, just got off on multiple <laughs> tangents, you know. <laughs> I did want to. I did want to thank you too on camera, man. For you know the way this even came together is you know from honest kind reaching out to you, seeing your work, being amazed, and thinking this guy's work would be perfect for our, some of our art shows. And when I realized you were in England, I was just like, oh, man, man he's in England. But I still reached out, and I told you, I said, hey, man, we love your work. We would love to have some of your prints involved in our shows. Can't really afford, you know, a lot to buy anything, but if you'd be yeah. willing to donate some pieces, we'll worry about the framing and everything and even shipping if necessary. And you sent so many pieces over the years. I mean, one of our shows, you sent, like, there was a, a, a Jay Dilla joint, James Brown, um, Nina Simone. And then later on, when Black Panther came out, you did that cover for um, J. Period for his, yeah. his next album for Wakanda Forever with, mm. with Big Boy and Dre is like, as, both as Black Panther. And that is just incredible. We put that in the show. People loved it. And so yeah, just, that, was, that was really enjoyable, very intense. And I, I knew I'd, I'd even put more effort into that piece than some of the album covers that I did. It showed, man. I was just excited about it. You know, I saw the the movie and that, that was really cool that's what's up and jay was um yeah he was just getting me hyped about it so yeah we worked pretty closely on that and yeah i just i just went for it and it was yeah it was good man knocked it out the park man we appreciate it thank really? you yes sir so yo i think that's a great note to end on because i know we're getting close to our time yeah and, uh, i just want to thank you again man you know um you look like you need some rest i hope you get some <laughs> Some good yeah, it's not showing that much, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like eleven o'clock there. You know, here it's like six. So yeah. Oh, it's not. It's not too bad. Okay. Yeah, I should really say, yeah, it's two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. I've had a busy day. What can I say? <laughs> well, stay busy, brother. Keep making all that amazing art. We're gonna keep supporting you, and we appreciate you supporting us. Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate that, man. No doubt, fam. I'm going all right. Peace. Peace. Ha, 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 ha.